Hey everyone, welcome to Logan's Mosh Pit. Glad to have you here. Today we're going to do another episode of the Setlist Snub series. In this series, I'm going to pick a handful of songs from different bands that don't get played live very much. However, I'm going to give you some reasons why I feel like those underrated songs actually deserve to get played live more often than they do. If there's a specific band you guys want me to talk about in a future episode of this series, Please let me know in the comments section down below. I'll check your feedback. Today we're going to discuss five underrated songs by Megadeth. Megadeth is linked to the big four of Thrash. Lumped in there with Metallica, Anthrax, and Slayer. Dave Mustaine, you probably know this already, was ejected from Metallica in 1983, so Many fans to this day still hotly debate which band is better, Metallica or Megadeth. A lot of tension there. I know someone is going to ask, so I figured I might as well get it out of the way now. I'm going to throw my two cents in. I prefer Megadeth over Metallica. That's the way I've always been. Not to say I don't like Metallica. I still do. I have... Absolutely no problem with Metallica at all. I listen to both bands. I just listen to Megadeth more often. I think they edge out Metallica with the quality of their music. So I'm not here to bash either band. I view the music personally as a much higher priority compared to the squabbles taking place in their personal lives. I don't think we should pay attention to that as much. Besides, that's their business, not ours, so what's the point of <laughs> discussing that? Anyway, with Megadeth's splendid songwriting, brisk speed, and unwavering commitment, they have managed to acquire and still have a staggering dose of admiration all around the world. So, as always, let's review why some songs get to tag along with the band on tour and others are confined to the album. You never hear from them again. This happens with all bands, not just Megadeth. The first reason is that casual fans typically absorb all the revered songs from a particular band. For example, with Megadeth, you have songs like Hangar 18, Symphony of Destruction, Wake Up Dead, Sweating Bullets, Tornado of Souls, you name it. They spend all their time listening to those songs, and Mega don't care about the deep cuts. They just discard the deep cuts, leave it at that. They don't realize what they're missing out on, though. The next reason is that bands are influenced to a large extent, by themselves and their followers to stick to their most well-known songs on the set list in order to please fans who show up at these concerts. They want to keep those fans happy when they go to the show, be satisfied when they leave, so they will be more likely to come back to another show later on in the tour. The next reason is that songs off less prestigious albums in the discography, such as Risk, Super Collider, and The World Needs a Hero, those albums, they frankly face a much more seldom chance of appearing during a live show because the fan response will probably be underwhelming. The fans won't recognize or will feel disappointed when they hear those songs. They want to stick to what they know. The next reason is that once in a while, a band becomes uninterested, dissatisfied, and outright dismisses a song in their catalog since they develop a rivalry with the song. They don't want to play that song live at all, so they pretend like they never released it in the first place. They just act like it never happened. 
The fifth and final reason why some songs are lucky enough to get played live and others get the short end of the stick is that casual fans just outnumber the amount of hardcore fans. And the casual fans, as a result, get to determine to a certain extent what the set list eventually becomes. They have a bigger say in what bands play live than the hardcore fans. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, just the way it is. So now let's go over some stats I collected off setlist.fm. I'll put a link to it in the description. Easy way to find this information. All you have to do is go to Google, type in the name of the band that you want to find more information about, then type in tour statistics right after it. Click on the very first result, and it'll take you to setlist.fm. It'll give you a long list of all the songs a band has performed live, including the cover songs. It also has some data about tours, albums, pretty much everything you ever wanted to know, and then some about the bands. So, according to setlist.fm, the most commonly played Megadeth song live at shows happens to be Peace Cells. Peace Cells has been played 1,598 times over the years. In other words, that equals 402,696 seconds, which is just about 4.6 days. That's how long it would take you, 4.6 days, to listen to Peace Cells that many times, if you listen to it 1,598 times in a row without any breaks at all. So hopefully that makes more sense. So now let's get to the underrated songs. I picked five of them, like I mentioned earlier, each of them off a different album, because Megadeth has released a ton of albums, so it made choosing a variety that much easier. I've arranged the songs in descending order from most played live underrated song to least played. I'll put a link in the description of course to all the songs that we're going to discuss momentarily. Starting off with This Was My Life off the Countdown to Extinction album. This song has been performed live 119 times which means 7% versus Peace Cells. So basically, if you went to 100 Megadeth shows, you would only hear This Was My Life seven times in those 100 shows. You would hear Peace Cells every time, I'm sure. So, of course, this song is pretty close to becoming extinct. Well, I'm glad I got this song, This Was My Life, In My Life, because this song has typical gravelly vocals you've come to expect from Megadeth, sophisticated lyrics, this was my, this was the road to my destiny, and this was the road to my ruin, that line in particular sticks out to me, I love that line. This song also contains a terrific layout, and Menacing Guitar Parts 2 from the magnificent Marty Friedman. Next up, how about Back in the Day off the System Has Failed album. It has been performed live just 63 times. Back in the Day would probably be my favorite song from this group of underrated songs. It's so hard to pick though. I would say Back in the Day edges out the rest though, just slightly. Anyway, Back in the Day aligns flawlessly with Megadeth's signature sound. Dave Mustaine again issues some haunting vocals and Chris Poland follows it up. He lends some filthy riffage on that tune. Next up, how about Mary Jane off the So Far So Good So What album? It has been performed live only 53 times. I noticed while browsing through the forums, it seems like Mary Jane was a nearly unanimous pick among fans when it comes to 
discussing underrated songs, songs that deserve more credit than they get. I definitely agree. Here's a tip, though. When you search for Mary Jane on YouTube or Spotify, wherever you listen to music, I usually do on YouTube, make sure you listen to the original version of Mary Jane, not the remastered version. Trust me on this. You'll thank me later. The original version has some extra bite to it. I think it's worth listening to compared to the remastered version. This song just oozes malice and reeks of frustration. I mean, an I lead, you follow message within those lyrics. This represents Megadeth at the absolute height of their power. It doesn't get much better than this. Next, we got 99 Ways to Die off the Hidden Treasures album. I definitely wouldn't mind listening to this song right before I expire. Just throwing that out there. So, what genuinely, it genuinely bothers me that this song has been shunned to an extraordinary degree. This song contains some gory lyrics, psychopathic delivery, courtesy of Dave, stunning instrumentals, and I'm absolutely convinced this song, 99 Ways to Die, has earned a spot on the set list. You can't change my mind. Finally, last but not least, the last underrated song we're going to talk about today, I picked Vortex from the Cryptic Writings album. This song has been performed live zero times. Zip, zilch, nada. You can't find any live performances of this song, Vortex. <sighs> Such a shame. Megadeth really was mega done with Vortex. They couldn't even play it live once. I, I don't understand why. Yet another mistreated track follows the pattern set by the previous examples. Vortex is a song you can't skip. You will regret it if you skip Vortex. Trust me on this. At no point does listening to Vortex feel tedious. There was never a point in the song where I felt like I wanted to do something else. I was completely locked in to the song from the moment it started to the moment it ended. In fact, it just keeps getting better all the way through. Each second that goes by gets more intense feels like Mother Nature herself was present in this song, just asserting her authority over mankind. So, even though that's the last song we're going to discuss today in terms of underrated songs, it's definitely not the only five underrated Megadeth songs out there. There are many, many more. In fact, Megadeth has released... 15 albums over the years so since my five picks are each of a different album that means doing simple math 15 minus 5 there are at least 10 other underrated songs out there you can find at least one underrated Megadeth song off every album right so be sure to let me know in the comments down below what other underrated Megadeth tracks you can think of so that does it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate the support. I'll see you next time. Until then, rock on.